Here are today's top stories. Administration senatorial candidates remain at the top 12 as the counting of votes in the midterm elections draws to a close. The AFP cites the role of the implementation of martial law in maintaining order during the elections in Mindanao. Malacanang slams critics following the airing of a comedy skit criticizing President Duterte on Netflix. And the DILG urges candidates and local officials to lead the cleanup of campaign garbage in their areas. Good day, I'm Rom Dulfo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story, administration and allied candidates continue to lead in the senatorial race of the midterm elections as the counting of votes draws to a close. As of the latest, re-election Senator Cynthia Villar remains in the number one spot, followed by Grace Poe, former presidential aide Bongo and Taguig Congresswoman Pia Cayetano. While opposition bet Bamakino surged into the magic 12 of the partial official tally, Bong Revilla, Coco Pimentel and Nancy Binay hold on in the partial unofficial tally. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections reminded candidates today to submit their statements of contributions and expenditures within a month after the elections. For its part, the PNP has removed more than 650,000 election campaign materials in Metro Manila as part of their Oplan Baklas. The Armed Forces of the Philippines highlighted the role of martial law in ensuring peaceful midterm elections in Mindanao. AFP spokesperson Edgar Arevalo said yesterday that martial law proved to be a serious deterrent to potential disturbances, the polls such as armed groups. Arevalo also attributed the success of the elections to the people's cooperation with the security measures laid by the AFP and the police. He said meticulous planning and preparation by government security forces and the commission on elections prevented possible attacks by New People's Army on Election Day. The Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG commends its attached agencies for securing the 2019 elections. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año thanked today the PNP, Bureau of Fire Protection and Bureau of Jail Management and Penology for their contribution to the conduct of peaceful and credible polls. He also lauded the Task Force Contra Bigay, composed of the COMELEC, DILG, PNP and NBI for their concerted effort to confront the incidents of vote buying. He said the DILG through its local government academy is ready to provide capacity development programs to prepare newly elected officials in effectively discharging their duties and responsibilities. The Comelec plans to review its contract with the suppliers of the SD cards and marking pens due to the glitches that were recorded during Monday's midterm elections. Comelec Chairman Sheriff Abba said on Tuesday that the law department will review the possible penalties in case there is a violation of the contract. Over 1,600 or 1.9% 1 of the nearly 86,000 SD cards and 961 VCMs were found to be faulty and were replaced. Many marking pens were also found to be bleeding and have been replaced days before the start of the pulse. Abba said they have to abide by the procurement law regarding plans to get Smartmatic as supplier of the vote counting machines which were also used in the 2016 and 2019 pulse. The Education Department hails the successful usage of its monitoring app for teachers on election duty. Meanwhile, an election officer notes issues in the usage of the voter registration verification machine. More on these and other news around the metro from Janice Cave. Over 33,000 members of the electoral board have so far used the DepEd's election monitoring mobile app which allows teachers to report election-related incidents with accuracy and ease. DepEd Undersecretary Elaine Pasco said teachers with poll duties have become more engaged in reporting their concerns because of the app. Among the reports received by the DepEd Central Office are failure of full payment of honoraria, unpaid allowances, injuries and harassments, and other complaints. Meanwhile, the system used for the voter registration verification machine in Davao del Sur may have caused glitches that delayed election proceedings. 
Election Officer Rosemary Pagirigan of Bansalan Municipality in Davao del Sur said the electoral boards are not used to the system being utilized in this year's elections, which is why some were not able to follow the process. In other news, about 1,000 personnel were complained for allegedly violating the election regulations. Most of the policemen complained about were acting as security escorts of candidates. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde clarified that some bets were allowed police escorts based on threat assessments done with Comeleg and reiterates that the PNP remains apolitical. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come. Malacanang slams critics following the airing of a comedy skit criticizing President Duterte on Netflix. The widow of slain Tresi Martires Vice Mayor Alex Lubigan wins the mayoralty race. More on these with the PNA Newsroom continues. PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar slams detractors of President Duterte for allegedly criticizing him in a global scale through Netflix. Miguel Hale with the story. Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andanar on Tuesday night slammed Netflix's political satire show Patriot Act hosted by American comedian Hassan Minaj. In a statement, Andanar said they find it desperate that on the eve of the Philippine midterm elections, the detractors of President Duterte would use an American comedy show to demonize him and his government before the global audience. Andanar said Minaj exaggerated the 27,000 drug war victim figures stated in the show as there are only about 5,050 drug personalities who have died during anti-drug operations, most of which were done by vigilantes. He also cried foul for Minaj implying that the arrests of Rappler Chief Executive Officer Maria Reza and Senator Laila de Lima were solely due to their criticisms of Duterte as both personalities have violated domestic laws with Ms. Reza committing tax evasion, breach of anti-dummy laws and violation of cyber laws and Senator De Lima transgressing anti-drug laws. Andanar also defended Duterte's endorsement of candidates in the 2019 senatorial election saying that the Philippines, like the USA, is a country where democracy is vibrant and the will of the people reigns supreme. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. In other news, Rappler CEO Maria Ressa and writer Reynaldo Santos Jr. pleaded not guilty for a cyber libel at the arraignment held at the Manila Regional Trial Court Tuesday. The arraignment proceeded after Judge Reynaldo Estacio Montesa of the Manila RTC Branch 46 refused to dismiss the case. In its order, dated April 12, the court ruled that online publishers could be sued within 12 years of the publication of an allegedly libelous report. A businessman sued Rappler after it named him as the owner of a sports utility vehicle used by the late Chief Justice Renato Corona, who had been subjected to impeachment proceedings during the last administration. Maralco has agreed to relocate its power distribution facilities to pave the way for various railway projects being pursued by the Department of Transportation. Maralco signed an agreement with the DOTR earlier this month for the relocation of electric posts located along the LRT-1 Cavite Extension, Common Station, MRT-7, North-South Commuter Railway System, and PNR South Long Hall, among others. The DOTR will in turn provide the proposed alignment of the railway projects to facilitate the relocation of their electric poles. Meralco is eyeing to allocate more than 4 billion pesos to relocate distribution poles affected by railway projects under the government's Build, Build, Build program. Two candidates who ran in place of their murdered spouses met different fates in the recent midterm elections. The widow of the late Ako Bicol Party representative, Rodel Batocabe, on Tuesday conceded defeat in the 2019 mayoral elections in Daraga Albay. Batocabe lagged behind acting mayor Victor Perete, who is on top of the race in the partial and unofficial tally as of 1 p.m. Tuesday. Incumbent Mayor Carlwin Baldojo is tagged as the mastermind in the killing of Batokabe in December last year, was at third place. Batokabe expressed gratitude to those who supported her as she respected the decision of the people. Meanwhile, Gemma Lubigan, widow of slain Tresi Martires Vice Mayor Alex Lubigan, defeated the father of incumbent Mayor Melencio de Sago Jr. Lubigan filed her certificate of candidacy last October. 
to continue her slain husband's unfinished business. The vice mayor was on his last term and had signified intent to run for the city's mayoralty post just a few days before he was killed. Other provinces are reporting a smooth conduct of the midterm elections despite delays and glitches in the system. Bench Bondok with the story. In Bataan, 36 SD cards bogged down in 10 areas causing a delay in the proclamation of winning candidates in 9 out of 11 towns. Even provincial and congressional winners in Bataan were still not officially known on Tuesday afternoon. The Provincial Board of Canvassers had to declare a recess in the canvassing pending completion of results in nine towns and one city. According to Assistant Provincial Election Supervisor Hilda Rodrigo, only the towns of Bagak and Hermosa have finished transmitting the results and had the votes counted by the Municipal and Provincial Board of Canvassers. In Pangasinan, the conduct of the midterm elections was generally peaceful according to the Pangasinan Police Provincial Office. Police Provincial Director Wilson Joseph Lopez said they are still on full alert while securing the return of vote counting machines, ballots and voters registration verification machines. Some of the VCMs in the province also malfunctioned, causing delay in the casting and transmitting of votes. In Bohol, Deputy Speaker and Gubernatorial Bet Arthur Yap urged the Comelec to finish the counting in eight clustered precincts. This after the poll body said there were defective SD cards needed for transmittal to the national level. Yap said any further delay will leave votes prone to cheating and manipulation. In Cotabato City, elections were more peaceful this year compared to previous polls, despite the explosions that rocked the city hall last Sunday. Comelec said no other major untoward incidents were reported apart from the malfunctioning of VCMs and voter registration verification machines. All teachers assigned to election duty also did not back out and no harassment occurred. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. Up next, the DALG urges candidates and local officials to lead the cleanup of campaign garbage in their areas. Several Filipino short films seek to grab the attention of critics at the prestigious Cannes Film Fest. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Actually, ito na yung nakasanayan natin na buhay, yung mag-cover tuwing alalan. Alas 4 pa ng madali. The Department of the Interior and Local Government on Tuesday called on local officials and candidates to clean up and remove their campaign materials. The ALJ Secretary Eduardo Año said that candidates must be a good sport and show that they have the best intentions for their communities by being part of clean-up drives in their areas. Año said cleaning up election trash will be an opportunity for the people to show discipline, unity, and hope for the country. He said clean-up efforts in public schools which served as polling precincts, should be fast-tracked in time for the opening of classes in June. Air 4 News, the 72nd Cannes Film Festival opened on Tuesday with 21 films from around the world competing for the prestigious Palme d'Or. The prestigious film festival opened with the premiere of Jim Jarmusch's zombie comedy, The Dead Don't Die. Also debuting at the festival will be Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and the Elton John biopic, Rocket Man. Mexican filmmaker Alejandro Gonzalez in a redo will serve as jury president. Meanwhile, Lab Diaz's feature film Ang Hupa is included in the lineup for the director's fortnight. It is a non-competitive showcase that runs alongside the film fest. The Manila Lover, starring Anjali Bayani and directed by Swedish-Finnish filmmaker Johanna Paigo, has been selected for International Critics Week. Ophelia, the thesis film of Mapua graduate Selina May Medina, will also be presented at the Cannes Short Film Corner. The 72nd Annual Cannes Film Festival runs until May 25. In sports, the Gilas Filipinas women's team is confident of making a strong finish in the FIBA 3-on-3 Asia Cup in Changsha, China. In a press con on Tuesday, Coach Pat Aquino presented the part of the Philippine Cup consists of Jack Animam, 
Afril Bernardino, Janine Pontejos, and Claire Castro. The team will be pitted against lower-ranked Chinese Taipei, Samoa, and Vanuatu in the tourney to be held from May 23 to 26. Aquino, who holds the UAAP record in the women's division with 80 consecutive wins as a coach, described his team as currently the country's best in women's three-on-three. -three. He said the goal is to top the bracket and advance to the second phase. He is also looking forward to forming the best team for the 30th SEA Games in Manila in November. 12 students are representing the Philippines at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in the U.S. Janice Cave with the story. 12 aspiring scientists from different high schools nationwide were honored. The Philippine team of young student researchers, led by DEPED Director Joyce Andaya, flew to the U.S. for the ISEF on Saturday for the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, or ISEF, held in Phoenix, Arizona, from May 12 to 17. ISEF is the largest pre-college science competition worldwide, which gathers top young scientific minds from across the globe to showcase their researches on the international stage. The country's 12 representatives are the winners of the 2019 National Science and Technology Fair last February 18-22 to in Tagaytay City. These are John Eric Agarao, Kathleen Chloe Antonio, Ana Beatriz Suavenco, Maria Isabel Lyson, Neil David Kayanan, Shaira Gozun, Ivan Reltongol, Mary Joyce Carla Buwan, Alpha Akain, Lester Sabado, Dia Denistan, and Nathaniel Reyes. They are from five different schools, Taguig National High School, Iloilo National High School, Angeles City Science High School, Pangasinan National High School, and Quezon National High School. They received the first Gokongwe Brother Foundation Young Scientist Award and a potential scholarship in a science, technology, math, or engineering degree at their dream universities. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Part of the country experienced short rain this morning, but don't expect this to continue on. We're still experiencing hot weather brought by the ridge of high-pressure area and El Nino. Keep your umbrellas ready to protect yourselves from the heat and in case of possible isolated rains. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. Administration senatorial candidates remain at the top 12 as the counting of votes in the midterm elections draws to a close. The AFP cites the role of the implementation of martial law in maintaining order during the elections in Mindanao. Malacanang slams critics following the airing of a comedy skit criticizing President Duterte on Netflix. And the DILG urges candidates and local officials to lead the cleanup of campaign garbage in their areas. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website to follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Rom Dulfo. Good day.